Hi guys, Steve Woods here. Welcome to another ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about view models and how we can use them in our applications. And to do that, we're going to build a, a sort of a basic scenario that you might find in a real-world application. Um, and we're going to display a list of properties with uh, a search filter on the left-hand side. So we can filter by price, we can filter by number of bedrooms in a house, um, and indeed the property type as well, whether it's a house or an apartment or or any any type. Um, your basic property website, I guess. Um, so let's jump into Visual Studio. I'm going to put my glasses on, just so I can actually see the text on the screen. Um, and what you'll see is you need to create a basic ASP.NET MVC application. This is 4.6.1. Um, and the only difference I've made to my application, um, which you may or may not want to do yourself, is just to right click, hit properties, and on the web tab, um, just instead of having current page I always set it to don't open a page and what that allows me to do is just alt and tab back to the browser every time I build the application instead of having a new tab open up and having to close the previous ones it's just personal preference but uh, that's kind of a difference that you might notice while uh, we're running through this tutorial and uh, it's something I always do with my projects just to uh, to save myself a little bit of time but anyway let's jump into the application so like I said, it's a standard um, ASP.NET MVC application. If you run it, you will end up with a page that looks something like this. And the only difference that you'll see here is I've added another tab on the top on the navigation called Houses, which if you look at the bottom left, takes us to the Houses controller, and it'll be the index method because that is the, uh, the default. So if I click on that, this is what we're going to build. We're going to build a search results page, obviously with search results on it, and a filter to filter our data. Now, where's this data coming from? Well, if we go back to ASP uh, Visual Studio, rather, um, you'll if you've got the Server Explorer, I've created a, a housing database on my local server. Within that database, it's a SQL Server database. Within that database, I've created a properties table, and within that table, you can see we've got various columns and if I just show you the data this is the the information there you can see six properties there and if we were just all tab back you can see there's the six properties they're shown by default um, when the houses controller is navigated to so how do we get this data into the application well let me just close that down and go back to the solution explorer you can see in my models folder I've created a data context this is a link to SQL class um, you could use entity framework whatever whatever preference you like really I guess and all I've done is I've gone to the server explorer and just dragged the table across so that we can have a direct reference to that table from within our from within our code I've got a property class now that I can uh, that I can use within the application and in order to actually get that that data into the application I've created a data layer using a repository class whenever this is called it instantiates a connection to that database and gives it a variable called DB and we've got one single method called get all which re returns a list of type property again coming from our uh, data context um, as you can see return DB dot properties to list simple as that so we get, can get a list of all of our properties from any controller um, just by creating a, a new property repository object and running the get all method so close that down close that down and what to do next um, I might as well run through the well we'll run through the uh, the controller so if I go to houses you can see I've got two uh, methods there one is a get and one is a post um, because if you go back to the page you can see I've got a filter button there which is going to um, it's going to send this form to the post method um, on our controller but initially all we do is in the in the get version of the index method we set up our property repository this is the data access layer that we've just talked about and we set up our model which is our view model and then we set a property that's on that model to the contents of the property .get all list. So it's basically a list of properties being transferred into this into this class. Then return the view. When we return the view, we pass over the model, the view model. And if we look in the view itself, um, you'll see it's strongly typed. It's expecting a search results model class, and within that we 
the property results are actually displayed in the column so if the model contains property results if it, if it does a count greater than zero then we go through and say right we found x number of properties and then it just loops through all the different types of all the different properties from the uh, the property results collection on the model uh, if not it just says sorry no properties can be found so that's dead simple this this code here corresponds to this list of uh, of properties there however you might have noticed that we well, we're just do we're not doing any search filtering or anything. So we're basically saying, right, when we come to this original property page, we're just going to show a list of all of the properties. And I put a note in there to say we could filter based on the default values of the model, and this would probably be better. So basically, if you wanted to only show uh, houses with three bedrooms to start with, then we, we could we could uh, we could do that instead of just defaulting to zero, which is the the minimum number of bedrooms. Um, but in order to uh, in order to do that, we need to study the uh, the search results model class or view model in more detail. So let's quickly flick to that. So remember, this this search results model is the actual uh, it, it's the class that defines what is shown on this page. We have all of these models, and we also have these search keywords uh, and bedrooms, price, property type, whatever uh, properties that are also part of the uh, of the of the model. So let's go into it. I'll just hit F12 to load that class. And all it is is just a, a class within the model's namespace. And you can see it has a list of properties and it has a constructor. Now, the list of properties, um, you can see they correspond to the, the form values on here. So we've got a keyword, bedrooms, price, and property type. And in here, we've got keywords, bedrooms, price, and property type. Um, they are public variables, uh, public properties, sorry, um, so they can be changed um, throughout our controller. And they each have v a basic validation on them. So if we don't enter, for instance, a property type, it'll ask us to enter a property type. If we do enter a property type, it must be within a certain range that was specified here. Otherwise, the error message will be shown as well. Um, and again, same for the price, just different ranges and different messages. And then same for the bedrooms. And underneath that, we have a property called property results which is our collection our list collection of property objects um, that gets chucked into the into the results so that's our entire model we have keywords bedrooms price property type and uh, property results so how do we get stuff into there right well I have you'll notice in the in the in the in the index method I'm just creating that model there now when I do create that model we enter the constructor for the uh, for the class, and in here I've set uh, default values. So it says our constructor sets up default search parameters for the properties, so that they don't need to be specified unless we're performing a filtered search from the user. And what I've said to you is bedrooms should be zero, price should be zero, property type should be zero, and keywords should be empty and um, blank. And also property results themselves should be uh, a, an empty list. So what I could do is I could go to the home controller. And I'll just terminate that. If I do not specify this, and then we run the application again, what you'll probably find is that it'll just say no property results have been found. It won't error out because by default within our uh, within our class, we are setting the property of property results there to an empty list. So there'll always be an object on that property. There'll always be a, a list of properties, even if it's empty. So if I just refresh this page, you can see we no longer have any properties um, assigned to that to that property on the class. And when it wakes up, there should be no results found. You have to bear with my laptop while it's on a little bit of a go slow. But there we go. Sorry, no properties could be found because we're we're just not we're not specifying any within our controller anymore. We we haven't set this property. We're just assuming the default uh, the default result from within the class, which is obviously. Uh, it's obviously here an empty an empty list just a new list of type property so we're not showing anything next up is how do we perform a filter on the data because obviously these we need to see uh, what's going on and we need to we need to figure out how to only show properties with bedrooms more than one more than two or more than three bedrooms so what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-enable that line of code just to uh, illustrate, so we just build the application again. There we go. Refresh the page. This should be back. We should have six properties now. 
so that we can work on them. Now these text boxes, they get their value from, uh, if I go into the index, into the view, they're in the first column. So you can see I've got four uh, text boxes set up within a form which posts to the houses me the houses controller again the index method because the, the method isn't specified but using the HTTP post um, each one is has got a label for it, for it so you can see we've got a label for keyword we've got a text box for keyword and we have a validation message for keyword if it doesn't meet the, meet the uh, validation uh, requirements specified in here. However, for the keyword property, there are no validation requirements, so it's kind of um, it's not required. But uh, if we go to the bedrooms, you'll see there's a label, a text box, and a validation message. And that validation message will show um, if we don't meet the, the 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 kind of the restrictions on this property. So if we don't enter a minimum number of bedrooms, then it will say, "Please enter the minimum number of bedrooms." And we can demonstrate that by just deleting the zero out of there. So if I hit filter, it's saying please enter the minimum number of bedrooms. Now interestingly enough, now you'll notice that the model is invalid because there are no properties found because we haven't specified um, bedrooms. And why that's happening is if we go to the houses controller, we are now in the confines of the post method because we've posted our form. And you can see when, we, when we're calling this method, it it requires uh, uh, it requires our view model to be passed to it, and that that's obviously um, within the, the method there. Um, and the first thing it does is to check is the model valid, and obviously it isn't because in this case we haven't we haven't entered the bedrooms, so all of this code only gets executed if that model is valid. If not, it just it's it just basically takes this this variable this this model that we've passed into the method, and it just returns it to the view as it was and as it was is it was entered with no bedrooms a price was zero a property type was zero and therefore no properties could be found because we haven't actually called our method to pull the properties out of the database because it's within this section of code that doesn't get executed because the model's not valid um, so if I if I also put that back to zero and hit post again then obviously we get our results back and the reason we get our results back is because again we're going through this page because the model is, is now valid we're setting up our property repository so we can get our data out. We're setting up a variable called properties which calls the method get all which returns all of our properties. And it then starts the filtering. So the first filter it does is based on the property type. So it's as if the property type from the model is greater than zero, then we know that they're not just looking for all properties, they're looking for a specific type of property. So it filters all of the properties that we got from this method um, and it filters them by the property type to see if it matches what we specified in the model. So if I was to type in property type 1, which is for houses, we would only get four results back. If I do a filter. So all of the property type 2s have disappeared. If I type in 2, now we've only got 2 because all of the houses have disappeared. If I set that back to 0, It'll show all six because it's zero represents any property, and we can we can uh, determine that by just studying the code. If the property type is greater than zero, then obviously properties should be uh, should be of that. Sp uh, should, if it's zero, then any properties get displayed. If it's above zero, then um, only properties of that specific type get displayed. If we put in minus one, it should generate an error because we require a range. So a property type must be between 0 and 2. So you can see the model is invalid, so we don't get any properties back. So set that back to 0. The next filter, so once that filter is complete, we move on to the next one. So any remaining properties get filtered by the number of bedrooms. So in this case, it isn't an actual, it isn't a value that's equal to, it's a value that's greater than or equal to. So we're basically in this box specifying a min minimum number of bedrooms. So if we look at the, the list of results, we have bedrooms three, bedrooms one, bedrooms two, bedrooms three, bedrooms three. So if I put a minimum number of bedrooms as three, this one and this one should disappear. So we should only have four results back. And we can see that because we've specified the minimum of three, this one has five, and all the rest have three. So that's working correctly as well. But if I only wanted to, um, to display properties that had a price, which is the next filter, a price minimum of, uh, I don't know, Let's say 150,000. 
Uh, this one and this one should disappear. So we've got two results left. But if I set that back to zero, we should see more properties who are, that are above 150,000. Or maybe not, let's bump it down to 120,000. Yeah, so we've got an extra one because that was 144,000. And um, so it's basically showing every single property with a, with a value above 120,000. But maybe we want a minimum of four bedrooms, which would only leave this one. So there you see, it, it, it's working absolutely fine. So we put that back to zero, back to zero to get all of our properties back. And the, the very last thing to do is to restrict the results based on the keyword. Now the keyword isn't required but if it is specified so we've checked to see if it's null or empty if it's not null or empty then we know that the properties want to need to be worked on to filter based on the keyword and all I'm doing is just checking against the uh, the name of a property converting it to lowercase and seeing if that lowercase version contains the lowercase version of the keyword that we enter into the box so if I type in James then we should just have that one property. But if I was to specify a property with a minimum of four bedrooms, then we would have no properties because that that house has only three. So you see the filtering's working. The reason that I've put the keyword, the reason that I've put the keyword last in the in the filters is because when you're doing string comparisons against database records, it can be quite resource intensive. And it makes sense to do that last because we've already sort of pre-filtered the properties uh, based on the parameters that we've specified above. So in other words, we, we're not gonna get 500 properties back um, and then only select the ones that we that, that we want that match the number the minimum number of bedrooms um, before we do the text we, we, we're basically going to do that last um, to make sure that we have as minimum load on the server as possible if that makes any sense I'm feeling quite tired and I don't think that last there uh, that last part made any sense but basically I'm doing it last to save server resources um, and not do any string comparisons on properties that we are going to discard anyway based on these uh, on these search parameters and then finally we just we add the property results that are remaining um, into uh, sorry we we pass the properties that are remaining from our filters into the property results of the model and then we bang the model back out at the view and display it accordingly so I mean we can never actually have an invalid model because whenever we create um, whenever we actually create a, a search results model class it ensures through the constructor that every parameter is never null and um, they always have a, a, a value a base value um, so we, we can basically control what happens we don't have to worry about doing any validation on the actual model within the uh, within the view we, we don't have to check for nulls we don't have to check for empty values or anything it's all done within the uh, within the constructor of the actual class and that is about it I'm sorry if some of it wasn't clear I got a little bit muddled up throughout the uh, throughout the tutorial it is a little bit late and uh, but it's the only time I can get some quiet. I hope you found the uh, the video useful. If you liked it, click uh, click like. If you're not subscribed, please do so. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.